Hello, hello! Welcome to our next video where we're gonna talk about double swinging rook castles. Double swinging rook opening, as we already defined, is when both sides will move their rook to the other side of the board. For example, here we will be talking about opposing rook versus third fire rook. This will be vertical shogi, which means we will have to create shapes that are strong from the front. So let's take a look at our options. First we have cozy castle, where we simply move the king over here and move the gold up. This is like the fastest castle you can make, but as you can see only king is protecting the square. So then you can move a few other pieces, gold up and silver up like this. This is something we call king muso or peerless gold castle and is characterized by well a lot of pressure here but also notice that the king cannot run toward the right side because the silver becomes a wall this shape is a bad shape it's called silver wall uh, this is why we push this pawn and sometimes use this silver on the edge um, sometimes if this pawn is exchanged threatening pawn here stuff like that sometimes we wait with the silver move, like give king more space. Some people don't consider this a castle because you, you see the generals are not really connected. But yeah, generally this is like one of the basic shapes you can try in double swinging rook. Next, we will have new version of the same castle, which is called, um, we don't actually have English name, but it's either called Satomi's castle from ladies professional Satomi or I it's gonna be my translation here less detached holds i have no idea how to say that in english maybe you guys in the comments <laughs> comments have some ideas anyway another keen muso is when you put both of your goals one square away from the king the idea is you have more control over this side of the board uh, the king has a little bit more space as well and the rook feels safer because its ear is being protected but yeah the bad side is those squares um, become weaker because of lowered protection, right? This is again the bow toward the idea of balancing the board rather having a solid castle. Now speaking about um, overprotecting, we have also this castle which the only name I found was 3-8 gold. Uh, both generals are close over here, protecting this square with all its life but now king is of course double blocked um, yeah it exists it can evolve into a little bit higher position as well um, gives you some more security on the second file naturally we have mino castle but notice that because the attack is coming from above which is technically our weakness we do keep the king a little bit further away we're kind of scared of getting close to our weak points over here and we do not push the edge pawn because this would actually speed up the enemy's attack on the 1 5 file. So we often will see um, like this shape, like this king 3 9 and edge pawn not pushed. We, of course, since it's Mino, we can evolve it. I found one game that had a Kimura's Mino shape. Yeah. And then this gold came here and um, attached itself to the castle. There is also I Mino when you had Mino and develop it. And you can see that only few moves from here you can make right side Yagura very easily. As you know, Yagura is very good shape for vertical Shaggy. So the right side Yagura is also very useful in double swinging rook opening. We of course have a variation of uh, Yagura, which um, is when we cannot push this pawn, we can make a lower shape like this. And of course, if we're lucky enough and opponent allows it, we can attempt to create a silver crown. Now, yes, yes, we do have Anaguma. But notice it also is going to be a little bit different than a normal Anaguma. This gold that previously was on this square, it's going to be higher, right? All the generals, in fact, are going to be higher because, again, we want as, more, as much influence in front as possible. So if you want to play Anaguma in double swinging group, please remember this specific shape. And uh, speaking about right side king, we also have like this very interesting technique 
uh, called Takada style. Takada being a professional that visits Europe, if not every year. <laughs> you probably met him if you've been to European Shogi Championship. And he created this interesting style that's very popular in Belarus as well, where you do swing your rook uh, to this side. I don't actually know the move order, but I know that let's say the enemy will attack here. You can decide to put the guard here, put the guard here and evacuate the king to the left side. But depending on your intentions, maybe you want to move your king to the right side. So this type of strategy gives you the flexibility of choice and might be interesting for people who like more freestyle type of play. Yeah, this is called Takada style left side king. The reason why there aren't this many castles in double swinging rook is that it's particularly new opening. There are still many things that are undecided. So it's quite fun to experiment yourself. Uh, different styles of swinging rook, different castling. Yeah, I really recommend you to try it out. Uh, in the next video, uh, we're gonna finally see some practical examples of casting phases, of the opening phases. I think I'm gonna show you, let's say, two or three professional games, vertical and horizontal shogi. I'm gonna explain why they make each move. We're gonna analyze it together. Yeah, basically, you know, watching stronger players is the best way to learn. So we're gonna do it uh, on this channel as well. Yeah, so I will see you there. Bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.